Hey, this is Brian Hogg and this is Inside Hogwarts number three. This is the second half of the process uh, episode. We talked about the sets, we talked about the puppets and the audio in the last one. Um, this time I'm going to try to make this a little faster than, um, or shorter, by going faster than the previous one uh, because I do ramble, I'm aware. Uh, we're going to try to get through, let's see, first uh, video, lighting, crew, and the writing. This is being recorded on a Sony HDR HT3. It's a high-def camera, it does 1080i. Picture quality is not bad. It is, uh, you know, it worked well enough, certainly for us. It's actually probably the part of the process that is the least needing of change. But I still want it to be better. Uh, I would love if I had the money to go for a $10,000 or $20,000 camera, but of course that's, that's not in the budget. So what I, what I have my eye on is a Canon HV20, and I actually like two of them because that'd be really cool to be able to do a two camera shoot. Because that's a limitation of having one camera is that I can only, I, you know, I can do a wide shot or I can do a close up shot or whatever, but when I want to go in for the close up to get the coverage, I have to do it again. I have to get my performers to do it again, which adds time, but it also breaks the spontaneity. You might, you know, the one take might have been better when it was in the wide shot, but of course you can't really pick and choose. I mean, I, you know, you could artificially crop or something, but that would be uh, quite horrendous. Um, so uh, a second one would be ideal. Uh, worst case, in the best case, is an HV20 plus the HT3, but there's a, enough of a, uh, an image difference because the HV20, from all, intent, from all um, reviews I've heard, it seems as though Canon accidentally put a much higher quality lens in it. Uh, and an image processor than they meant to or something but so the quality is a lot better uh, and uh, you can also get actually I think this camera does it too but you can also get HDMI out which means you get uncompressed video out and I want to get that set up as well that will probably require that would definitely require a new computer on my end but I think I can get mine with a fairly cheap PC because all it really needs to do is have the bandwidth to accept the the uncompressed video which won't be that expensive um, well, for computers it won't be that expensive, but it's like, you know, say $600, I think would give me a, a computer that would handle it, and I'd have to worry about the hard drive as well. But then I would, I would, I would save it to the hard drive and then offload that to an external uh, drive for the video, to store the video, but, but capturing it onto the drive and then copying it over. Um, as I said, this is sort of the, the, I almost said the weak link, but I guess the weak link in terms of the needs to upgrade, because the image quality is not that bad. And uh, with better lighting, this camera actually looks like the, the video on this camera looks much better. Uh, like in daylight, it looks great. In my, uh, you know, the Dockman 1 setup, it didn't look great. Um, but I think because I'm gonna be fixing the video, or it'd probably be the lighting anyway, which is the next thing I'm gonna talk about, it, the two of those things together will sort of work nicely. So, those are the camera. I want, I want the camera, I want, <laughs> I just want, I want two of them. I mean, it requires having a camera operator, and I have one lined up, but um, I wanna get a second one. Or at least even have the option to do it would be great. I mean, I could get like two two static shots. You could have like a moving shot and then a static shot, uh, and then you don't even need two camera operators. You know, one of them could be the static medium shot of the whole scene. So you have the two people like, "Hello, how are you doing?" Well, I'm doing okay. Well, that's great. And then one camera kind of, you know, uh, moving around and um, and just sort of finding uh, focal hot spots. And that would be great because then you could cut from static to close, and it would be it would be so much better. You'd still have a nice blend of of movement and, and, and stability as well and everything. So it'd be, it, would be, it would be a nice compromise, although two camera operators would be even better. So the second thing is the lighting. And I don't know if you can tell, but uh, I look a little better than I did in the previous episode. Although at the end of the last episode, I looked a little better. I was sort of in this rough pose. Um, I'm improving the lighting drastically because the lighting in the last season sucked. I had these $15 fluorescent lights that are of the kind that you would generally find in a person's basement, uh, keeping a little greenhouse alive. Uh, I basically, I glued them to a 1x4, which I built a base on, so they just kind of sat on the floor. Um, and actually it worked in many ways because it, like the elevator light, which was a like $5 fluorescent, didn't look that good, but it was still an office environment, so it kind of fits that, like the studio here has crappy fluorescent lights. Um, but the problem with it was it created, because they were low quality, and you need higher quality to apparently avoid this, created sort of a, a, a visual banding. So you'd have, if my hands were just dark gray instead of my hands, you would, as I'm talking, you would just see kind of this thing going up. And you really, you know, you'd notice it kind of, because it only really happened when it was white 
Um, that was my, <laughs> that was my hiding behind my head. Um, you know, when it was just a white screen, which happened a lot because the, most of the sets were kind of white, uh, and that happened with more than two lights, and it was just an interference thing. So what I've gone to instead of getting the more expensive fluorescents, which I can't really afford. Uh, I've gone to these sort of dual light work light things. So I've got two of them. I've got one, you can really see, but one here and one there. And they're on like a six foot pole and there are two of them. Each one is a 500 watt, um, I just like some kind of incandescent or something. I've got, I've got parchment paper serving as a diffuser over it. Um, I'm gonna get like a little voltage limiter thing uh, to do a dimmer, which apparently I can do. Um, and I won't get the banding. The light quality is good. I can put I'm gonna have to figure out a thing to put gels in front to affect the color because it's a little, it's a little reddish for my taste right now. I think, um, but that'll be fixed. I also have a single light like that, and I have behind me, I have just a little. You can see there, just a, a little sort of backlight to get, you know, the highlight kind of thing. Uh, one of them will be in the foreground, and then the other will be um, in some sets. Like this, it, in this particular set, I don't need anything focused on the background. Uh, and that would happen for a lot of the puppet sets, uh, like in the you know the cubicles and various other things. And that would be sort of the puppet where I am, and then the, the you know the set behind. But then also for the green screen, um, I'll use the second light to illuminate the green screen separately, and I'll be able to have the physical separation to actually get a better lighting on that. So it'll help my ability to key nicely. Uh, I'm probably also going to upgrade um, the keying fabric. I just used to have some blue felt right now, but. Um, I think for like 150 bucks, I can get a pretty good sized and pretty good quality, like actual uh, key fabric, and I'm really considering that. I don't, I'm gonna have to wait for a little bit for the money on that, but because um, that money's spoken for, but uh, it'll be it'll be cool. In the cases when I have, like, say, I'm illuminating, you can't really see because it's nothing here, but this is just my black wall that I've just put up for this. Um, behind, like, say, behind it would be the green screen, or or behind me enough would be the green screen. I have. The single light that I have, which is just has like a little, I'm using all these hand gestures, and you can't see my hand, I'm using hand gestures. It's a little light, sort of like a lamp thing, but with a 500 watt bulb in it. Uh, I'll use that as a as a as a fill light. So that's that's that. I'm gonna try to avoid using the fluorescence unless it's for a purely stylistic uh, consideration, like I did in the first season, having the elevator light, which was crappy and it hung, but it fit because it was it was supposed to be a five dollar elevator light, because you know that's all that offices are willing to pay for.